Okay, welcome everybody. I hope you can see me okay and hear me okay. Uh, I'm Dottie. I'm uh, the um, administrator of Club W, as you may know. And tonight we have uh, presenting for us Paige Clemens, and I'll let her tell you uh, about herself. Uh, full disclosure: I want you to let, I wanted to let you know that I that Paige had nothing to do with my makeup tonight. I have had this on since six o'clock this morning. And I've had a mask on all day, so I just put on some lipstick and actually smeared some lips, lipstick on my cheeks to give me some life. First time I've ever done that, so I guess made it work in a pinch. Hopefully I don't look like a clown. So um, uh, let me re uh, tell you a couple things, please. Um, the presentation will be recorded and it will start momentarily. While you're waiting, here are just a few things to keep in mind. Uh, you are muted, but are welcome to enter any questions in the chat or Q&A as you think of them. And then uh, Paige will address the questions at the end of the presentation. So go ahead and um, go ahead and jot those questions in or uh, type those questions in as you think of them. And I am going to turn it over to Paige at this time. So thank you all. Uh, thank you all for joining us. And here's Paige. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's nice to meet you. I'm Paige. I currently work um, at Par Excellence in Zona Rosa. Uh, we do all sorts of different services here. Um, mainly, I focus on skincare. I, uh, that's kind of what esthetician is. It's just a skincare specialist. Um, that field can cover quite a bit. Um, I graduated with my associate's degree in aesthetics. Uh, that also includes, obviously, makeup. So, I am going to try to cover quite a bit and answer as much as I can during the presentation. But like she said, if you guys have any extra questions, um, go ahead and put them in that chat and that way I can kind of go down them towards the end. But during uh, the whole presentation, pretty much what I'm gonna focus on is giving you guys kind of tips here and there of you know what I would do for my skin type and where I'm at with my makeup and also cover some of the things that you might want to do differently if you have a different skin type. Um, I have a lot of tips as, of course for mature skin as well because I know that that's quite a bit more challenging a lot of the times to work with. If you see me reach off screen or anything like that it's just to grab stuff and I'll try to show you guys what I am using throughout um, and I'm going to be kind of looking over here because my I've got a mirror over here and it's impossible to do my makeup with the camera. So uh, to start off, the first thing that you always want to do, and I've gone ahead and done this, is make sure that you have a fresh and clean canvas to work with. Um, I use, let me grab it. So for today, I used what I use professionally um, in the room. So if anyone ever comes and gets a treatment from me, this is currently what I'm using. So this is just a nice, oh, it's very saturated, basic cleanser that we use here at Aveda. Um, so our product line is Aveda. The salon's name is Park Salons, which is kind of a crazy name. And then I tone with this. Toning can just really help to kind of smooth some stuff out. And then I finished it off with this moisturizer. I wanted to do the oil control because when you moisturize before you do your makeup, you want to make sure that it is a light enough uh, moisturizer to where it doesn't get kind of gunky or sticky. A lot of the times makeup won't blend very well with a very rich moisturizer. So you want something that's just a little bit light, but you definitely want to feel hydrated. Um, also, one of the most important steps if you're doing this during the day, uh, which typically I feel like most of us do first thing in the morning, is SPF. If you have any kind of skincare concerns, prevention is going to be the first thing. So, and even if you already have a concern, you can still prevent other things from coming up. So, the sun is very damaging. I use this one currently just because it blends very quickly. Um, it, as you can see, it says invisible. Basically, this one from Dermalogica, it really, it just kind of, it absorbs really nice and quick. I don't have to feel like it's super greasy on my skin. A lot of SPF can be. Um, when picking out SPF as well, you want to make sure it's designed for your face. Uh, usually, I go for at least a 20 or a 30 SPF. Um, a lot of, you know, like Banana Boat, Basic, 
body SPFs can be very thick and clog your pores. It can cause a lot of other issues. Um, and yes, I will do my best to type those out as I go with the products that I am using. There's gonna be quite a few different ones uh, when it gets to makeup, but I will definitely try to type those out for you guys probably towards the end if that's okay. Um, so, hydration is definitely the most important thing. And then the next step that I always like to do is prime. Especially if you have fine lines and wrinkles, priming is going to help to kind of smooth over that. Keep in mind, the unfortunate thing is there is no such thing as completely hiding wrinkles. We can blend them to where it it helps to smooth them out a little bit, give you more of a youthful look. Um, but really what we are wanting to focus on in any makeup situation is for you to highlight your own beauty. Uh, we don't want it to be a mask. We don't want you to look cakey. We want you to look as beautiful and the best that you can look. So I like to use a couple of different primers. I like to use one that's a little bit thicker on my eyes and around my eyes just because I typically end up getting quite a bit of creasing in here. Um, I get a little bit oily around my eyes as well and I want my makeup to stick a little bit better. So I this one is darn near gone. Uh, I like to use this eye primer. It's just from e.l.f. A lot of the products that I use makeup wise are e.l.f. products. They are very inexpensive. You can get them at any drugstore, uh, such as like Target or Walgreens or any of those places. Um, I wanted to pick a few things. Uh, most of my makeup that I'm going to use today is actually fairly inexpensive. I wanted all of it to be pretty accessible to anybody if they wanted to go and find it. But e.l.f. does have a lot of really great products. So they're definitely worth trying out. And I usually just prime with my fingers. Always make sure your hands are cleaned. I have washed my hands and sanitized. So definitely make sure of that before you start touching your face. We don't want to break out. And when you are doing anything around your eyes, you don't really want to um, just like drag and smear. You kind of want to blot it in like this. It's a little bit gentler. Um, the skin around your eye is definitely a lot more sensitive to pulling. It's a lot thinner of skin and we don't want to cause fine lines. So we just want to kind of blot with our finger and not drag. And it's always a pretty good rule of thumb with anything you're applying to your face to go out and up. Um, especially if you are applying any kind of pressure, you don't want to pull down. That's also going to train your skin to start sagging. So we want to keep good elasticity. I wish I had music or something. I feel like this is going to be weird in between steps because I'm going to be quiet. A couple of other things that you can try uh, tool-wise, tools are really great as far as skincare goes. Um, different, they've come out with a lot of really cool tools that help with things like bags under your eyes. Um, my favorite actually for mature skin, and I did, I have used this on clients in the treatment room before, and it does have some pretty great instant results. It is called the New Face, N-U Face. Um, I will put that down at the end as well. So basically what it does is it uses microcurrents to tighten the muscles in your face. So think of it as like a little facial workout. Um, that is really great overall. It's going to help tighten your skin, but especially right before a big event or anything like that, when you really want it to look fresh and plump, uh, it just helps to give you that extra boost. So think like kind of like a little natural looking Botox, not anything too intense. Let me see real quick. What is the name of the, yes, e.l.f. Yes, it is available at all of those places. You... Um, there are different shades of primer. Uh, uh, I really don't like to go as far as shades with primer and I will kind of tell you why here in just a second. Um, but really there's all sorts of different types of primers. I really like to do something that's a little bit 
uh, like I said, heavier on my eyes. And then I use this one, it's just called the poreless, gosh, I wish it wasn't so saturated. There we go, poreless face primer. Basically what you really wanna do, anytime you see something that says poreless or blur, it's really gonna just help smooth some things out. You don't need it to be super, super thick on the rest of your face. This one's pretty thin. Um, let me find my brushes. And so I like to additionally keep my brushes really clean as I go, of course, because I also use my professional brushes on other people's faces. I have to keep them very sanitized. It is always a good rule of thumb for you guys as well, just because when we get bacteria and gunk that builds up on our brushes, then we can cause breakouts. Nobody wants that. So what I do actually, and this is gonna sound, sound kind of crazy, um, whenever I was in school, we had a makeup artist that actually gave me this tip and I've, I've stuck to it religiously ever since. I use adult toy cleaner for my brushes because it is designed to be very, very gentle. It's antibacterial and it is much more regulated um, as far as the industry goes of what they're not allowed to put in it. So they're not allowed to put fragrances um, or anything like that that we don't want on our skin. So, and additionally, it also helps with the vitality of my brushes as well because we want them to stay really nice and soft and keep the bristles from getting hard and poking at us. Um, so that's honestly what I use. I just put it on this very soft, and you can use it on a towel or a paper towel if you'd like. I like to use this just because it's really nice and soft. Um, it's kind of like a, like a velvety texture. I just spray it on there and I just kind of wipe them after I'm done using them, but after each step. I, of course, nobody's perfect at home. Don't feel like you have to be that crazy about it. I use these professionally, so it's obviously going to be something that I have to prioritize. But for my primer, you don't need a lot. You just need just a little bit on there because it will spread really nicely. And just kind of start by doing this. And then I just kind of put it with those sweeping motions going upward, just spread it all over. And like I said, that's just gonna help to kind of smooth everything out and blur a little bit of that. All right. Okay, and so the next thing after I've cleaned my brush that I'm gonna put on, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this part of it. Uh, as far as if you want to start with the base or your eyes, it's really up to you. I, I've heard people say, you know, absolutely do the eyes first, absolutely do this first. I would say it's more of if you find that you're having an issue with your eyeshadow um, dropping down onto your cheeks when you're applying it, um, then definitely go ahead and do your eyes first. That way you can always wipe that off and remove it. And that way, you know, your base is going to be nice and clean afterwards. Uh, but I honestly, I don't have that much of an issue with the eyeshadow that I have. I always like to start with the base just because I feel it just, it flows better for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do all of the base and then we'll do the eyes. So like I said, guys, it's really up to you. It's whatever feels right to you. Um, if you're having those issues though, it definitely helps to do your eyes first. And so what I do is I actually use a BB cream. I'm going to kind of show you. Again, this is e.l.f. This does have SPF in it. I'm um, an SPF 20. So if you needed something in a pinch, you don't want to get multiple products, a BB cream or a CC cream are going to be the best things for you because that way it's a really nice, quick base. Um, you don't necessarily have to use foundation over a BB or a CC cream because they do have that tent effect to them. They give you a little bit of coverage. They have that SPF in there. It's kind of a fix-all. The difference between a BB and a CC cream is that the CC cream is going to be a lot more color correction. So it works really well if you have any kind of age spots or blemishes that you're wanting to cover up. Um, that's going to help to kind of blend that over a lot better. This is going to be more preventative. So it's usually they're very hydrating. Um, they have a little bit of that moisturizer in there. I really like that. Um, so typically I kind of do this, especially for day makeup, because 
it's not always that you need all of that coverage. We, we think if we get a thick full coverage foundation that it's going to do, um, you know, cover everything that we want it to cover. But realistically, what those big, really heavy foundations do, uh, especially for wrinkles and fine lines, is they'll set down in there. Um, so with that, you know, they're just going to kind of accentuate that and it's going to make it look more like a cavern and we don't want that. Let's see. Does using a face primer prevent face from having a dewy look? It can, definitely. So um, especially with things that say like blur, um, then it's going to kind of do that for you. Additionally, too, we're going to use a lot of oil-free stuff. Uh, that's always kind of my go-to if you do end up with too much of that glowy look. I would avoid things that say like luminating or luminous, like they'll have those kinds of keywords in there. That's going to give you more of that dewy glow because that's also something people kind of look for. So I am going to, I have this little plate and you can do this on the back of your hand too. Um, I do always good roll of thumb and I am knocking my backdrop around. Okay, good rule of thumb whenever you're doing your makeup, have a personal wipe near you because that way you don't have to worry about having to not touch anything and get, you know, makeup all over your stuff. I always keep one close by so that if I do it on the back of my hand um, or get it on my fingers, I can just wipe it off and that way it keeps your bottles clean without getting them all crazy looking. But really you don't need too much of this. And I have my handy dandy little plate. So just like a tiny little drop of that, this stuff also spreads really nice. Again, we don't want it to be cakey. Um, I think that is one of the major things that I would say for any of my mature skinned clients is avoid that cakiness. We don't want it to be super cakey and powdery. It's gonna look kind of crazy for a second. And while you are picking out your uh, color of your base, either foundation, creams, whatever you're looking for to do that base, uh, I always say match to your neck, not to your hand. Your hands are typically not going to be the same shade a lot of the times as the rest of you. And that way, since you are blending into your neck, that that way it doesn't look like that weird line there, like it's an obvious different shade. Additionally too, um, and especially with mature skin, I would say try to do warmer tones. Cooler tones might age you a little bit. It makes you look a little bit gaunt um, and we don't want that. We're trying to look for more of a youthful look. So I even go with a little bit of a darker tone, not, not too dark, just a little bit warmer than my natural color. That way, um, if I get out in the sun or as we change or anything like that, it's going to help with that. And it also doesn't help, it doesn't make me look as washed out. I feel like the cooler tones really tend to wash me out and kind of make me look a little bit sick. So I would definitely say stick with those. And so basically you're just gonna wanna kind of smooth that all over. And we're gonna go back in and blend this better too with my beauty blender. For those of you who don't know, beauty blenders are your friend. Okay, and so that gives me, gives me just a little bit of coverage. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I do end up getting quite a bit of hormonal breakouts. So that just kind of helps to smooth that over a little bit. We are gonna go in with concealer to help cover those a little bit better. Um, but that, I feel like is a really nice base. It's not something that's gonna be over the top. It's not gonna be a really crazy glam look. And the last thing you wanna always make sure you do is blend it into your neck. And I do the upward sweeps again, guys, cause you don't wanna drag your skin down. We wanna make it look as young for as long as possible. All right. So after that, we are going to go in with some concealer. Do my brush real quick. Okay, and so with my concealers, I like to use a couple of different ones. 
The reason being is I like to use a darker one on the areas where it's going to be more my chin um, and we're wanting to pull away because I have a very large chin. Um, and then around where we're wanting to highlight, I like to use one a little lighter. So basically, because if you know anything about contouring and highlighting, what it's going to do, the highlight is going to pull forward the things that we want to pull forward. The contour is going to pull back. So we're kind of tricking the eye uh, by using those different tones. And so I like to use this one that's a little bit darker. Again, these are, these are still e.l.f. right now. Um, just a little bit darker in a warm tone. And then I have this matte finish, very light color, which we use very little of. Um, just around the parts where I want to highlight. So when doing that, you just want to take just a little bit and you'll see people online and certain people that will just go in and smear that's going to end up with a lot. You're going to end up with a lot of concealer, um, especially a lot of concealers that are very thick are going to end up basically just kind of, as you go through your day, start to kind of wrinkle and smudge underneath your eyes and you don't want that. So I do a little bit there and then I do a little bit on my lids because that's just going to give it a really nice even tone for when I put my eyeshadow down. And you can also, when you're highlighting, and we'll do a little bit more highlighting in just a bit. When you're highlighting, you can additionally too kind of go down your nose. Um, depending on the shape of your face that you're wanting, you can do in here. Um, all of those different things are gonna just pull things forward. It really depends on your face shape though. My nose, I, I'm pretty okay with the shape of my nose, so I don't typically mess with it too much for the sake of time. But you know, if you've got like a really wide nose and you wanna kind of smooth that out a little bit, a great way to do that is to highlight here and then put just a light contour on the inner corner. And we'll talk more about that whenever I get to that contour. And then now we're gonna use that beauty blender. This is your friend. This is amazing for helping to blend everything out um, no matter what your skin type is. And I have mine in a little bowl because you want it to be just a little bit damp and just wrung out enough that it's not really drippy. Just get a lot of that water out of there. So it's nice and damp. That dampness is just gonna help to kind of smooth that makeup over a little bit better. And you just go in and blend. Additionally too, with um, going back to the question about dewiness, if that's not something that you're looking for, definitely avoid oil-based products. Um, try to look for something with a matte finish. Also, I, at the very end, will set my makeup with um, setting powder, and that's going to help to get rid of a lot of that dewiness, too. So that's something to consider at the very end. And something to keep in mind, too, none of this is really rules. These are just tips for enhancing your experience a little bit just to help you get the results that you're really looking for. Blending does take a little bit. Additionally too, if you don't wanna buy one of these big beauty blenders, I have a lot, I get the disposable ones quite often. Um, again, mainly I do this professionally, so we can't use obviously like a sponge that I've used on 10 people's faces. Um, so I get the disposable ones and you can honestly, you can get a pretty large bag of them for I think around $5 anywhere like Walmart or Target. And I did bring mine, so I will show you guys what that kind of looks like here in just a bit. But they work just fine. Um, I like this for my personal use just because it is a lot quicker to use a bigger one. It covers more area, obviously. Okay, and something that you don't want to do is put concealer on crow's feet. If you do any concealer on your crow's feet, it will bring them out more. And I know that, again, I know that the idea is to cover it up with 
richer, thicker things, but really it's just going to end up settling into those creases and then really bringing them forward. So we don't want to like conceal over the top of them. You can do a light amount of that BB cream and that's still going to help to conceal them a little bit and we'll set with powder too. So that'll give it just enough of that coverage, but really there's not like a great way to go in and completely mask them. You're really just going to accentuate them more if you try to cake more and more and more makeup onto them. So additionally, this is a bag I have had probably for almost two years now. They last for a very long time. They are just, I mean, you can get them colored, you can get them white, doesn't matter. And really they're very inexpensive. They're just like this, little sponges. And that way, if you, you know, you're worried, oh, I'm not gonna wash my beauty blender enough, or I don't wanna mess with that, you can always just get these little guys. They're really quick and easy, so. Additionally, too, I totally forgot about this. If you guys have a large breakout that you don't want to deal with, um, I also have been using Curology to help with my acne. They're great. They've been working out really well. They have these fantastic rescue patches. So what these are is it's a little patch that helps to get rid of the bacteria around uh, where your acne or your breakout is. And it also sits against your skin tightly enough that you can put makeup over the top of it. So if you have a big event and you get this crazy breakout and no, no makeup's covering it, um, putting one of those on there is not only going to help to clear up that, uh, that breakout without you know, gunking it up with a bunch of makeup, but it's also going to make it to where it kind of covers it up. So they're awesome. It's something I just discovered recently and I wanted to tell you guys about because I really loved them. Um, of course, with masks, that kind of helps with this area because nobody's seeing it anyway. But if you're, you know, if you get like a big one up here, it's been amazing for me. So, all right, guys. And I'm going to go in with my darker concealer now and just kind of hit those little blemishes, just like a little dot on each of them, just the ones that I really want to cover up. Like I said, it's pretty oversaturated, but you can kind of see the discoloration in there because. I have been breaking out under my mask, you guys. Like everybody. It has been an uphill battle, that's for sure. If any of you have been breaking out more than like more than you usually do, just know I obviously do so much to my skin all the time and it has not mattered. So it is quite the battle. Um, I'm using a niacinamide serum, like I said, from Curology, and it's been helping to clear it up a lot. Uh, niacinamide additionally can be very anti-aging, so it's a great product to have. Um, but yeah, they that mask, man, it's it has been a a pain. All right. Oh, I missed one up on my temple. I got breakouts. I don't even notice sometimes. Okay. I wish you could see a little bit better. I, I tried to get the lighting as good as I could. It is quite oversaturated with the Zoom app. Not the best for this, but I'm gonna give you guys all kinds of tips and stuff so hopefully we can get you there. All right, so the next thing that I'm gonna do um, is contour. So basically, and I've used this one for a while. Again, this is e.l.f. Um, I typically, as you can see, kind of go with this one. This one's a little bit dark for my skin tone. I'm very, very pale. Um, this one is just gonna give a little bit of that uh, without making it look like crazy. So, and with contouring, you don't want it to look like a harsh line going up your face. All you wanna do is kind of just give it a little bit of that shadow so that it kind of just gives it the appearance of higher cheekbones. Um, and if you already have impressive cheekbones, you may not want to do something like this because it's going to make it 
look even more sunk in. You maybe don't want to look as gaunt. Um, for me, I have a very, very round face, a uh, baby face, if you will. And it is, it's a little nice for me to kind of get just a little bit of that definition because people typically think that I look like a child. And as much as I like looking young, I don't want to look that young. So I get carded everywhere and it's fine. It'll be great one day. Just want to do a little bit. And there are different brushes that do different things, by the way, guys. Um, I really always kind of tell people, play around with your brushes. Buy a brush set, play with them. There's some where, you know, professional makeup artists are going to tell you, oh, this is what this is for. I have found that something else I prefer. So it really just play around with it, see what makes you more comfortable, whatever you think is blending out better. Um, but, I mean, this one, as you can see, it's a little bit puffy, but it's still a little bit kind of flat on the top. Um, that's just going to help to kind of pat it in. And as you can see, I'm patting it in, not just like swiping. Um, that padding is just going to help to lightly press that into my skin without ending up with like a line where it's not supposed to be. Kind of like blending it as we go. I like to do a little bit up on my forehead too. Just around my hairline. Just kind of gives it a little bit of transition between dark roots on my hair to very, very white pale face. You can do a little under your jaw, just a tiny bit here. It's just gonna help to accentuate again your jawline here. Um, if you want more of a square jaw, or more of a defined jaw. If you have a very rounded jaw, this helps quite a bit. So it really just depends on what you're wanting to look like it's going inward. Okay. Okay, and so for blush, I know that you probably hear a lot of different things. Um, I've heard the mouth to temple rule. I think that's quite a bit. Um, I usually go from probably the apples to the cheek of the cheek up to temple, um, and you just kind of want it to kind of gradually fade a little bit. Um, I, I feel like going from mouth to temple, it just it, you end up with this like kind of clown effect. Um, additionally, too, try to pick a color that makes it look more like your natural flush tone. You don't want it to look like super pink or over the top um, variant from what you actually naturally look like because that's when you're going to start looking a little bit more like stage makeup and it can be just a little bit more or a little bit less flattering. Honestly, though, there are no rules. These are just suggestions. Um, if you guys prefer to have it be really bright and bold, be bright and bold. Whatever makes you feel the most beautiful is the most important thing. Um, these are just things that I found are more flattering whenever I'm doing someone's makeup. So, and again, similar brush. It's got a little bit more of an angle as you can see on this one. Play with your brushes though. Whatever you guys feel like is, is better for you. Um, just have fun with it. And this one is Morphe. It's a really nice palette. Um, Again, as you can see, there's a clear winner here that I'm typically using more than not. Uh, this is my day-to-day -day one. Sometimes when I want to do more of a glam look, I've used a little bit of this with this one. This one is a little dark for my skin tone, um, but I really love this shade. So usually just from the apple, kind of go up like this. It's just going to give you that nice kind of flushed look without making it look really intense. Okay. 
Okay. And I feel like going up to here versus just doing like a little spot right here is a lot more effective. This is typically when you actually naturally blush where you're going to see that happen. Um, so I feel like going up to that is just going to make it look like more of a natural effect. So like I said, typically whenever I'm doing makeup um, on myself or someone else, um, with some obvious ex exceptions if you're wanting to do more of a glam look, but uh, especially with a day makeup like I'm doing today, um, I, I typically just try to enhance the natural features that my client or myself already have. So really it's just more highlighting what you're already bringing to the table versus trying to cover it up and be something different. And makeup's really wonderful because you can be something different if that's what you're wanting to be. There's no rules as far as that goes. There's all sorts of fun different things that you can do. This is just more for a basic day-to-day -day makeup when you know, you're waking up, going to work, something like that. And at the end, what I'm actually gonna do is show you a quick kind of fun way to transition your day-to-day -day makeup into more of a night makeup. So some quick, easy steps to where you don't have to completely redo your face. You can just add them to give it a little bit more of a glam look without having to do a lot extra because a lot of times we don't have time. You know, it's it takes a lot of time to do this sort of stuff. All right, so I am going to skip doing my setting powder towards the end. And usually I do try to save that for the very end. There are setting sprays as well. Um, it really just depends on your preference. I've used setting sprays when I'm wanting to look dewier, but if you are wanting to do more of a matte, and I have a very oily T-zone, as you can see, um, that's going to help a lot with that. So typically for a day makeup, I like it to look a little bit more matte. Sometimes when I'm going out, you know, eventually when I do <laughs> again, um, I'll, I'll do more of the glowy look. Uh, but right now, when I'm just going to work and stuff, I typically try to make it look a little bit more matte. Um, so this is my love of my life. This is my <laughs> eyeshadow palette. You don't have to get anything this extravagant. This is a little bit more on the pricey side of everything. Um, like I said, I... ...is very big. So it is James Charles with Morphe. So similar to that uh, same, one of them is the same brand as that blush. This has just about everything you could ever want color wise. <laughs> That's why I love it so much. So we, it just really depends on what you're looking for. Um, typically more than not, I use a lot of taupe or browns. Um, so it really just kind of depends on you. And taupes and browns are going to be a lot more, you know, it, it's, it works for kind of everybody. And so if you want to get something like the, um, like a, any kind of basic palette is the word I'm looking for, then you can. They have a lot of really good ones. If you're wanting to pick something and you don't know what is good and what's not, a really good rule of thumb is to look at it, take a color, and I'll try to use something that'll show up really well. Take a little bit on your finger. Whenever you are in places like Sephora, um, with COVID being an exception to the rule, they do allow you to kind of play with the makeup. They'll have testers out. Um, they also allow for samples. So I always suggest get samples, try them out first, especially with like a base. Um, that way you know if you love it before you spend a lot of money on it. But yeah, places like that are great for kind of trying to figure out what you like. Again, COVID being an exception, I don't know if they're doing that right now, but typically they do have that as an option. But what I like to do is I like to get it just a little bit on my finger and just kind of pull it like that. You can see how, um, how much that shows up. If you do that with a, an eyeshadow and it like barely shows up, like if it does something like this, it's not very pigmented. It's not gonna show up very well in your eye, especially when it mixes with the oils of your face. It's just not. So definitely I like I like to do this little test whenever I can. It gives you quite a bit of pigment. And as you can see, this one is good to go. It is, it is very pigmented. So, and this is the perfect time for my personal wipes come into play. Wet wipes are amazing. 
Something else I like to keep close on hand too are Q-tips when I'm doing my makeup. That way if you do have any fallout from your eyeshadow um, and it's you know well into you doing your makeup, then it, you have like a couple of those little dots. It's a lot easier to get that off just by tapping with a Q-tip than it is to smear it. All right. So when doing eyeshadow for this look, typically I like to start, if I can hold this giant thing up, with this cream base. This is a pretty good uh, neutral tone for a lot of different looks. I love this one. I probably use it more than anything. Um, so usually I start with that as a cream base. Keep in mind, I did put the concealer and everything else on my eyes. They are prepped and ready to go. And you can use brushes, you can use your fingers. I've seen people do it both ways. I've done it both ways on myself. Um, obviously on clients, I typically don't try to touch them with my fingers too much, but um, if you do wanna use your fingers, sometimes that can help. You just wanna press it in. I'm gonna use this little kind of flat brush and do something very similar. All right. So basically you just kind of press and you want to put this, it's going to be pretty much your base color. So you can put this all over your lid. I can try to answer questions as I do this too. Is this your CC cream you're using? I use a BB cream. Um, but I would suggest a CC cream for a mature client um, just because it is going to be more color correcting. Um, the, I don't see a link or anything, but I use the e.l.f. BB cream. It does have SPF 20 in it, which is really nice. Um, it's pretty lightweight. It's not anything that's too matte or too uh, cakey is what I'm looking for. But additionally, it also I feel like has pretty good coverage. So, and for anyone who doesn't know, uh, color correcting, pretty much what it's gonna do is any of those tones that are red from like beauty marks or um, age spots or any kind of discoloration on your skin, typically it's going to help to mute that by using a different color to balance that out. So if you see like any of those primers that say color correcting on them, they'll typically be kind of green colored it's just gonna give you that light tone so it kind of balances out the red. And then red additionally is gonna help whenever you have, um, or like more of, it's, it's kind of like a reddish pink color when you see color correcting stuff. Those red tones though are gonna help a lot with um, like dark circles it can help a lot with. Anything that has more of an olivey tone, it will help to mute that. So it's kind of just doing the opposite to correct the issue. So it's pretty cool. But I definitely, yeah, I definitely, those are a lot more hydrating. And as we age, typically our skin starts to dry out quite a bit. Um, they're a lot more hydrating and they also have that color correction in there. So I would definitely suggest that one if you have mature skin. If not, the BB cream is awesome. I use it on myself more often than I use foundation, honestly. The only time I really use a full coverage foundation is if I look wrecked. If I have a big event to go to and I have had a bad week and haven't slept. <laughs> it just helps a little bit. Um, I also, you know, I don't have a lot of the fine lines and wrinkles yet, so I can get away with using something really thick and full coverage. Um, but really, I don't even like to use it very often because it's, it's a lot and it can go the wrong way very quickly. It can start looking very cakey on anybody. So really, it's just when I'm not sleeping well. So. <laughs> Typically BB cream is the way to go. All right, and so now what we're gonna do, so I have kind of this nice hooded eye effect um, already starting on me. So as you can see, when I look naturally, you kind of see this overlapping. So whenever we have that happening, and especially when it's more drastic, what we wanna do is we wanna lift and highlight this part of the eye so that this comes forward and that's gonna help to make that hood look a little bit smaller, less intense. It's gonna make your eyes look bigger and accentuate them. So how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna use darker colors and I'm going to not go with just the crease of my eye, but I'm gonna pull it up a little bit higher than where my crease is to give it that effect, like that hood is not there. We want to erase that hood. So 
just pulling it up a little, you want to leave this little spot underneath your eyebrow um, as a highlight point too. That's going to give you more of a lift in your brow. Um, so don't, don't take it all the way up to your brow, just a little bit above the crease and I'll kind of show you. So I'm going to use uh, different tones of brown to do kind of a natural smoky eye. I just think that this works best for the more people that I've seen, any eye color, really um, any ethnicity. This looks really great. It looks really um, complimenting to everyone that I've tried it on. So it's typically what I do more than not. Um, so I'm going to start with this lighter brown, if you can kind of see. And what you want to do is you want to build to the darker colors. So start with something smaller like or lighter like that. And like I said, you want to take it just above and into that crease a little bit. And that shadow is going to help make your eye look a little bit bigger. And you can do this with other colors as well. If you want to play with colors, if you want to find something that isn't just natural tones or neutral tones, how, rather, um, if you want to get something like I have with this uh, James Charles palette, play with the colors. If you want to try out pinks or greens or whatever you're wanting to try, have fun with it. Definitely um, still try to stay with lighter and then darker because that's going to help a lot just with the shape of your eye. I'm going to move this real quick before I knock stuff over. Keep bumping stuff. But yeah, you can do this with other things. Um, as you can see, even on this, there's light and dark of each of these colors, so you just kind of want to build same kind of method, but you can use other colors. When I'm not doing neutral tones, typically I am a huge fan of reds and pinks. Um, I just think that they are really bold and really fun. I've also dabbled in pretty much every color on this palette just to have fun with it. So just play around in your free time and that's going to help you to kind of gauge what you look best in because what your opinion is is the most important. Okay. So you really just want a nice lighter shade. And then we're going to build. And so I go with way over here. So this really big brown circle, um, it's a little bit darker. As you can see, there's some shimmers in there too, guys. We're going to kind of touch on that in a second. Um, but that darker big circle I'm going to do next. And the darker colors that you get for this look, you want to kind of stay closer to the corner of the eyes. You don't want to necessarily put it everywhere that I just put this color. You're going to want to just kind of put it here in the corner and build because we're wanting to kind of create a shadow effect so that way it's going from you know kind of like the cascading fade of that brown color it gives it a really nice effect Get a little bit more. and I actually have a friend of one of my best friends is getting married in Colorado in June and I do this look often enough that she has hired me to do this to all of her bridesmaids and herself. So she really enjoys it. There's going to be quite a bit of glam added to hers because it's bridal makeup. But um, yeah, she absolutely loves this. So I've gotten more than, more than not, I've heard people say really good things about them trying this on themselves. Okay, and so this is the point where I usually like to kind of blend it because as you can see, it's pretty intense. It's pretty drastic. Um, my favorite brush is actually not part of this set. This brush is actually an e.l.f. brush. I really do love their products, guys. Um, this is one of the oldest brushes I have. It is tried and true. Um, it's still amazingly in good shape. Um, I honestly, I, I don't know if I'll ever stop using this and I'm going to be really upset if it starts to fall apart. So really with blending it, I just like go in little circles, just blend it out a little bit. And if you want to do more of an intense look, um, you can leave it like this and just blend a little around the edges just to help kind of blend them together. 
Um, since we're going for kind of a day look and then I'm gonna show you how to transition it into a night look, I'm gonna go ahead and blend it out a little bit more just to make a little bit of a softer look. And typically too, guys, I don't feel like this takes this long. Um, I'm, ta I'm talking a lot, so don't feel discouraged. Don't feel like, oh my gosh, this is gonna take me forever if I do this on myself. Really, once you get it down, especially, I, this doesn't take me very long to do in the morning. Um, I'm just taking my time so I can show you guys. Okay, so we blend it out quite a bit. And then I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a dark, dark color, just a tiny, tiny smidge. As I find the right brush. Okay, I'm gonna use this tiny little skinny brush. And I'm gonna do, if you can see it over here, this, oh, this very, very dark brown here. Not quite black. I, I do a classic smoky eye sometimes too. Um, I just really like this one a lot more. I think it complements um, my skin tone a lot more. But I mean, I've definitely used the black when I'm trying to look a little bit more dramatic. And so when I'm doing this, I'm just going in just a little bit here in the crease in the very corner on both eyes. Because again, we want kind of that cascade. And then we blend. Just pat it on there and then you can blend it out. And I feel like adding that little bit of dark there in the corner too helps a lot with my eyeliner to look a little bit better. Um, and don't worry, I'm gonna clean all that up too. It just helps to kind of give my eyeshadow or my eyeliner a little bit of a shadow underneath and it helps it a little bit. This makes it look a little bit more artistic in my opinion. All right. And so typically too, if you want to, it's up to you. I don't suggest this for a lot of my mature clients um, because we don't want to add dark circles when you're already struggling with dark circles. Um, but something that I do, um, and for anybody who, who isn't a mature client, I typically will kind of drag it under just a little bit here in the corner just to help give a little bit of that shadow. I just use my blending brush um, to blend what's already there into the corner here. I don't put more product on it. And again, if you struggle with dark circles, I don't suggest doing it like this. I'll show you a different way to kind of give yourself a little bit of definition under your eye um, without adding. All right. And you can use a blender too to do this. I'm just gonna use my finger because it's just a little bit of smudge there. Nothing too crazy. I'm just very particular about my, my stuff. All right, and so when you get to this point, typically we've gone into our highlight a little bit more than I necessarily want to. So just to add a little bit of extra to my highlight areas, um, I will go back in, clean my brush real quick. I'll go back in with that lighter cream color just to kind of add back to it, um, just so that it still has a really nice highlight effect. So same, same color we started with, that base color. I'm just gonna do a little bit just to kind of revamp that on both sides. and also underneath my brow bone a little bit because that is going to make those look a little bit more lifted. And I'm going to talk to you a lot more about brows too. I know that brows are very different person to person. Um, I do get mine tinted if you struggle with uh, 
any kind of sparseness or you feel like they don't look as full as you'd like, I really suggest tenting. Um, I love it. I do it quite often to myself. Uh, but anytime you get your eyebrows waxed, typically if you ask them, they'll also do tenting. Or you can come see me. I'll tent your eyebrows. Um, but I, I really enjoy it because it just, it, it cuts out a step for me in the morning. If I don't want to do extra to my eyebrows, I don't have to, they're pretty much on, they're ready, ready to go. So typically I'll have them tinted, but if you don't, I'm still going to show you kind of how to use, um, different stuff to kind of help with that. All right. So with your brows, and again, guys, we're going to, we're going to vamp this up quite a bit for our nighttime look. This is just the softer for the daytime look. So with your brows, I have this nice little pomade and this one is Maybelline. It's just a little brow gel comes in a little tub like this with a brush. Again, this is something you can get anywhere. And I just take a little bit on this brush that they give you. Um, you always want to go ahead and brush them out the shape that you want, which is nice that they have this on the end of this as well. Um, just kind of smooth them all down, make them all go the direction you want them to go. And the biggest issue I see with brows, don't make them look cartoonish. It's not going to compliment your face the way you think it does. All brows do not have to look the same. Um, just because, you know, one lady has them, you know, big, thick, and amazing in her way, and it looks great on her, doesn't mean it's necessarily going to complement your face shape. So what I like to do is go with your natural brow line. And for me, because mine are very thick, I don't do quite as much. I'll usually, just to add a little bit of length here, because mine do get sparse here at the corner. And then I do a little bit of highlighting down, or not really highlighting, just lining down here, just to give them a little bit more oomph. Just around the little edges where they kind of look a little bit more sparse. Again, mine are tinted, they're already really thick. Um, doing too much to my eyebrows typically is gonna look like crazy. So I don't typically do a whole lot. I just do a little bit of that. If you wanted to do something, um, if your eyebrows are a little bit more sparse and you wanna add to an area where there's not a lot going on, don't just do a line. I would suggest kind of doing like a feathering effect, kind of like this, because what that's going to do is it's going to emulate what hair actually looks like a little bit better, and it's going to give you that shading, because um, I know that it, it can be tricky when you have thinner brows. I remember it. I had them in two th early 2000s when everyone was doing it, when everyone had no eyebrows. Oh, I had a line. And it was not cute. Looking back on pictures is very scary for me. Because I did. I plucked them all off. All right. And so, yeah, I just do a little bit um, to mine. Additionally, something else I have that's really nice for brows is um, I think this is really nice if you do have thick brows like I do um, and you're in a, like in a pinch and you want to go really quickly and you don't have them tinted and you need just a little bit of something in there to feel like your makeup look is complete. Um, this is called Gimme Brow. It is from Cabrow. Uh, this is a smaller tube of it because honestly, this lasts so long um, that I don't feel like I need to buy the bigger tube. I, it just lasts so long for me. But... It really, it just has this like little, you know, wand on the end. It's tinted. You can drag it through um, just like you would with the other wand. Uh, again, mine are already like really dark because I haven't tinted, but it, it's really nice in a pinch because you can just brush it in. Good to go. Um, additionally, too, a good tip that I have for my brow wax clients, if you have hair that's kind of growing in its own directions, typically that's going to be from like sleeping on it a certain way, it'll start to train your hairs to grow the wrong direction. Um, so honestly, what I like to do, and, and don't just spray this on because you don't want this to clog your pores, but I just take a little bit of frizz ease and or really any hairspray, and I just spray a little bit of it on the tip of my finger. 
I usually will get kind of these ones start to kind of do their own thing sometimes um, so that they're a nice straight line. I will spray a little bit of that on there, pat them down. They're still hair. It will still hold them the direction you want them to go because it is hairspray. Um, again, you don't want to spray it directly onto your face because you don't want to clog the pores around there, but just a little bit on your finger, kind of dab it in wherever you have hair growing the wrong way. And what that will do is it's going to add weight to those hair follicles and it's going to, to kind of train them to go the right direction. So it will help with the hair growth overall too. So huge, simple thing that you can do at home to help with that if you do struggle with that. Um, I do get a lot of clients that have like the straight out growth and they don't know what to do about it and that has helped. Let's see, I'm gonna answer a question real quick. Seems to peel, okay. Well, I would definitely switch up what you're using. I would use a better pigment um, if your um, eyeshadow is peeling. I would be very interested to see what you're using. I have one brow that is a lot lower than the other. So when you have one that's kind of wonky, Definitely, I would suggest seeing somebody for your waxing. If you try to correct your own shape, it can be really tricky. Um, I would definitely suggest like, and it, it doesn't happen in one session. Typically, you have to kind of train them to go the right direction. Um, and yes, I can wrap it up. I'm so sorry. I talk so much. But yeah, you can definitely start to train them. Um, so additionally, guys, what we want to do for transitioning it. And so typically at this point, when you're at this point, this is a pretty basic day look. I would finish it off with my setting powder, which my setting powder is here. Um, but typically I would go ahead and do that and finish up. I might add a little bit of highlight on my cheeks. I would not use shimmer on mature skin in all the places. Um, if you're going to use shimmer on mature skin, I would stick to the, just the lid. But to kind of transfer this into a night look, um, I'm going to go ahead and wait for my mascara so I can show you guys how to put lashes on. Um, typically, a really great way to just kind of transition with some really simple, easy steps is to add a lip, add a bold lip if you want to add something bold and fun. I like a red lip. I know that's kind of a tricky thing right now with, uh, with masks, so be careful of that. But with lashes, one thing that you can definitely do, um, I don't know if you've heard the tip with curling them, that'll make a huge difference. Um, mine already kind of curl and hit my, my hooded eye here, so I don't typically curl them, but if you curl them, that's going to give them a little bit of that lift and ha have that kind of effect for you. Um, but when you do that, a really good way to help with that, um, take your blow dryer and just heat it up a little bit. You don't want it to hurt you to the touch, but just a little bit of warmth is going to help to curl them. And then definitely a big trick with lashes is put your lash glue on there. I know putting falsies on is always tricky. Put your lash glue on there and let it set for a second because you want it to get a little bit tacky. Don't put it on and then immediately stick it to your eye. It's gonna be a mess. So when you put the glue on, let it set. And so we're gonna let that set for just a second and I'll kind of show you one of my eyeliner tricks while we do that. So the eyeliner I like to use, I like to use uh, liquid eyeliner. It's a lot easier on me. Um, you get a lot cleaner of a line that way. This one is really nice. It is just Maybelline. Um, so basically, I like to do a wing line. I'm going to show you guys, though, for mature eyes, what I would do differently than just going straight out. Um, typically, when I do a wing on a more mature client, what we want to do is we want to lift your eye. And so we're going to trick that corner a little bit and giving it that little bit of lift. Sorry, it's hard to see in my little mirror over here. And so with that, you wanna kind of go up more than you wanna go out. Whenever you have um, eyes that are starting to droop, that way it's gonna pull them upward. Again, it's, I'm having a little bit of a hard time seeing in my little mirror over here and I'm trying to go a little bit faster, but make it go up. That's going to add a lot of effect. Additionally, I don't like to go all the way over. I will fill in a little bit here with shadow just to give it like a little bit of tinting. Um, but if you drag it all the way over, it's going to make your lid look really heavy. And by now this has set. And definitely if you need to trim them, then trim them. 
Um, if you set them on your eye first, then you can kind of gauge where they're at. It's gonna take me two hands to do this. It's tricky for me even. So typically I just stick it in the middle and then gently press the edges around. And really most eyelash glue, if not all now, is going to disappear. So don't worry if you see kind of little glue spots, but you just kind of want to press them around the corners and then lightly kind of push them up a little bit just so you make sure they're secure. And like I said, that glue that you can kind of see, that all disappears. It gets translucent. So don't worry about that. And then another trick for adding, and again, guys, I'm trying to hurry now, but I'm just going to show you like little steps on each eye. Another trick for if you're trying to add just a little bit of that extra for a nighttime event, um, typically that's when I'll pull out a little bit of a shimmer, these little red toned shimmers here. Um, so I will take just a little bit of that and kind of put those in the corner here just to give it a little bit more of a dramatic effect. Just on the corner of my actual lid, not up on my crease. And then additionally, this kind of lighter, these two lighter ones, I'll take this really nice light one and put that on where my highlighted part of my lid is and a little bit here in the corner and that's going to highlight it. So it gives you that a little bit more of a dramatic effect for when you're wanting to go out um, without kind of making you look um, kind of painted on. It's going to give it just like a really nice natural. Um, it's going to draw attention to your eyes. It's really nice. And as you can see, that glue is starting to go away. But yeah, the lashes make a huge difference. Um, with setting powder, and I'll just tell you guys real quick and then we'll get to some questions so that we can get y'all out of here. The tricky thing about setting powder is don't do too much. You don't want to look super powdery. It's going to make you look kind of crazy. Um, really with setting powder, we don't want to see it. We just want it to do what it's supposed to do and blend with everything else. The best places to put it are wherever you feel like you get the most oily. As you can see, my T-zone is a mess. Uh, typically your T-zone is where you're going to see the most and you just kind of pat that in. And as you saw, I tap my, my brush off before I do it. And that's gonna mattify it quite a bit. I have a very bright light on my face right now, so you're gonna see a little bit of that over that whitewashing with the camera. But it gets rid of a lot of that oiliness. So I would say if you're if you're having issues with the dewy thing, then definitely try that um, over a setting spray. And that'll just kind of make your makeup stay a lot longer too. If you have a long night or a long day, setting powder is gonna make it to where it doesn't smudge or start to smear or get cakey. So it's really nice. All right, so I showed you guys quite a few little tips. I, again, I wish my lighting was a little bit better in here. Uh, this camera, webcam are not that forgiving, but I'm gonna try to answer a few more of these questions before we get wrapped up, okay? Let's see, so. I would definitely, with the peeling one, that's very interesting. I would definitely check into that. Um, I rushed my eyelashes on and now they're sticking. Usually it takes me a little bit longer to do those. Let's see. So yeah, if, you're, if your eyeshadow is peeling, I would definitely switch eyeshadows. Um, priming your eyelid too is gonna help a lot if you have something that's less of a pigment, um, but definitely try that pigment tip and that's going to help you to find something that works a little bit better. Let's see. Paige. Uh-huh. Hi. Um, hi. Good question, hi. Uh, can you replace the eyeshadows in the palette individually, that big yeah. palette you were showing? Yeah, so it depends on your palette. Um, some, some definitely will have them individually. I don't think these ones come out, but usually whenever you see them, um, you'll see kind of like the metal ring, um, and they'll kind of be, I don't, you can't really see them through the camera probably, 
but you'll see the metal ring kind of sticking out a little bit more if you have a palette where they pop out. And they'll usually say on the palette if you want to pick one out that does that. Um, I know that Sephora's line that they have at their store that's actually their official brand, uh, I think they have one where it's customizable where you can just kind of pick through. Got eyelashes sticking in the corner, guys. My eyelashes are so long anyway. Usually, too, mascara is going to help that to stop from happening, but I did not apply any. So, and I do put mascara over my, my falsies, too. It helps your actual lashes to blend a little bit better into them, and it does stop them from sticking. So, mine are being crazy. But yeah, does anybody have any more questions before we go? Let's see. Can you recommend a facial mask for moisturizing? Yes. Pick something with hyaluronic acid in it. Um, hyaluronic acid is a water binding molecule and it's a small molecule so it will penetrate deeper into your skin. Um, try to stay clear, as far as makeup goes it's a lot more forgiving. Try to stay clear of using too many things from a drugstore that's skincare based. Skincare is a very tricky field because there's a lot of stuff out there with the boom of its popularity and a lot of people are trying to capitalize on it. So typically there's not going to be a lot of quality stuff that you can get from like Target. Um, if you do stick to something like Target, CeraVe and Cetaphil are the best things that you can get from there. They're dermatologist recommended. Um, but yeah, anything that is fragrance free, uh, BPA free, carcinogen free, uh, filler free preferably um, with hyaluronic acid is going to be the best thing for hydrating. And best treatment for dark circles. Um, as far as treatments go with skincare, you can use different eye serums that will help. Um, there is a vitamin C line from Dermalogica that, ha that has a really great effect. That's what I use whenever mine get really, really bad. Um, typically, if you do that, I would do it towards the evening. You can use it twice a day if they're bad enough. Um, but then really with covering them up, I would just dab a little bit of that extra concealer and make sure you put set setting powder over the top and then that's going to help to cover them quite a bit. Or like I said, that color correcting will help a lot too. All right. Anything else, guys? I nope. think you're going to do it. Obviously, right. don't use lipstick on your, on your cheeks. That's hey, you know, in a pinch, it works and that's okay. <laughs> Yeah. And Dermalogica, I've seen some at Walgreens. I have actually seen a few of their products there. Um, I know that Ulta has the whole line, so I would I would probably go there first, but I have seen some of that at Walgreens. Brooke, this has been absolutely fantastic. Um, I don't see any more questions coming in, so I think we can wrap it up. Uh, all thank right. you all so much for joining us tonight. Um, Paige, you're lovely and did a great job. And uh, thanks, uh, thank you so much. We will uh, talk to you a little later, okay? All right, thank you guys. Thanks everybody.